that's Jim Nordstrom. Uh, we've just passed through the laser barrier, and we should be ready to start Dr. Russell's manual check on the radiation seals in a couple of minutes. All right, Nordstrom. We're watching you closely. Eagle 1-4 from Area 2 Monitoring Depot. This is Dr. Russell. Yes, Doctor? When will you finish unloading? Well, the last few canisters are going in now. I should think in about 10 minutes. Steiner, as soon as the ship lifts off, please begin a manual check on that radiation seal. Yes, Doctor. You're really making a thorough check? Yes, I am. So far, their brain activity is normal. So far. Lord Baked Alpha from Eagle 2. We'll be arriving on schedule. Eagle 2 from Moon Base Alpha. We copy. Commander Koenig, we'll be landing at Moon Base Alpha 2335 lunar time. Coffee, Commander. Thank you. I've got Commissioner Simmons on a video call from Earth, Commander. I'll take it. Ah, oh, John. Well, your sign sealed and approved. The Space Commission's just ratified your appointment as Commander of Moon Base Alpha. What about Commander Gorski? Oh, I uh, relieved him of his command an hour ago. He's not your problem, John. Now, your job is to put man on meta. Any new information? How do you like this? The first close-up shot of the planet Meta, taken from the unmanned Spacefarer 9, just in. An atmosphere. Well, not only that. We're receiving signals, loud and clear, relayed from the same probe. There's no doubt about it. Planet Meta could be supporting life, as we know it. John. The metaprobe astronaut virus infection mustn't be allowed to stop us. We must make a man landing on Meta. Nothing must stop us. Nothing. Good luck. We're getting great pictures, Commander, of the metaprobe launch platform. I'll put them up for you. There's the probe ship docking now. good. But I'd like to see it on its way to Meta. That's the lock, Professor. It all checks out. There's definitely no radiation leakage. Are we coming in now? Good, Steiner. Thank you. It's an increase in brain activity. Steiner, get Nordstrom out of there. I think he's in trouble. <laughs> Security, get out there and bring Nordstrom in. Yes, sir. Doctor, he is in trouble. Oh, I need some help out here. Wait, 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 wait. I've got to get out of here. Intensive care unit, please stand by. We have a casualty. Got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. <laughs> Decontamination area, come on. Professor, he's gone berserk. <laughs>
John. Victor, still here? Yes, I, uh, I got caught. Things are far more serious than I suspect you've been told. What do you mean? People are dying up here, John. The virus infection? The virus infection. Commander Kornick. Commander Gorski. I think we both know the situation. I imagine you'd want to be left alone to settle in. You've no doubt had a tedious journey. Thank you. If you want to talk things over before I leave, I shall be in my quarters. Good luck. Well, I think he's taking it very well. Considering the abruptness of a suspension. Oh, I'm sure he'll survive. Oh, I'm sure he will. He's always been very flexible. Hmm. Commander! Benjamin. Happy to see you. Good to see you. Commander, welcome. Michael, how are you? Hello, sir. How are you? All right. Tanya Alexandria. Hello, Tanya. Welcome back, Commander. Oh, it's good to see you. All right. No virus. And what is it? John, I just don't know. It looks very much like radiation, but... Um, but what? There is no radiation. Victor, you know me well enough to know I'm not going to ignore the fact that people are dying up here. Oh. But the space flight of a century must not be allowed to slip through our fingers. No, of course I understand. That planet is passing just close enough to make a landing. There's no margin for error. Yes, but the problem here may affect the meta probe. Dr. Russell has some interesting ideas. Well, Simmons has told me all about Dr. Russell, and I... Well, he couldn't have told you all that much. Commander Gorski refused to let her report any of her findings. Oh. Look, why didn't you talk to her? Yes? Dr. Russell? John Koenig. Commander. Dahlmeier, 1887. As used by Louis Pasteur and Madame Curie, right? It's a replica, a college prize. Doctor, when will our Metaprobe astronauts recover from this virus? It's not a virus. What they have is an unusual form of brain damage. Their condition is critical. So they're not going to recover. What about the backup crew? Are they medically clear to fly this mission? I can say they're as fit as astronauts Warren and Sparkman were before they were affected. What's that supposed to mean? Commander, I saw the ninth man die this morning. One moment he was fine. Next, he lost all control. Here. This is a thermographic plate. A malignancy erupts. There's immediate disorientation of the kind that's classic in radiation attacks. Doctor, you've had 11 cases so far. Nine deaths. Yes, but all of those who died were workers at nuclear disposal area two. It's inconsistent. The two Metaprobe astronauts never went near that site. I know, and there are more inconsistencies. No radiation leakage has ever been recorded there. But what is consistent is that the probe astronauts and the backup crews have lived the same lives, been through the same training program. Are you saying the Metaprobe should not be launched? What I am saying is that the backup crew appears to be medically fit. But as a doctor, because of the unknown factors, I can't guarantee that they won't be affected three days or three months out into deep space. And you're saying medically the risk is unacceptable? The risk is great. The decision, of course, is yours. Doctor, I'd like to see the man.
John Koenig. That's fine, Young. How soon can you do it? In about a week. Carter? Commander, nice to see you. Good to see you. Well, is she ready to go? Yeah, we can start the countdown as soon as you give the word. Every hour's delay only reduces our chance of success. How long to get the backup crew ready? Oh, seven days. Backup crew? What do you mean? How long will it take? Oh, well, we can't do it. Calculations, coordinates. Hey, come on, Commander. You got a problem that you're not telling me about. Captain, I'm here to get the Metaprobe launched. All I want to know is crew accepted, you're ready to go. Yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> up there, I hope. I just wanted your first impressions of the situation. There was another death this morning at the nuclear disposal area. Dr. Russell talks about a kind of brain damage caused by what she thinks is radiation. Yes, yes, I've heard all about her theory from Gorsky. No, she's a very competent doctor, John, in certain fields of space medicine, but she's wrong about this situation. Dead wrong. So I'm going to send you up a team of top medical people to probe into Hold this it. problem. Hold it. Not that settled in. Before we do anything, I'd like to make sure there's no radiation leak at that disposal area. Look here, those two metaprobe astronauts didn't go anywhere near that area. Simmons, nine men have died. I want to find out why. Tell you what you can do. Stop sending up any more atomic waste until... Now, you know I can't possibly do that. Atomic waste disposal is one of the biggest problems of our time. Simmons, you assigned me up here to clear up this mess. That's what I'm trying to do now. All right, Commissioner. Let's trade off. You stop sending up the waste, I'll get your Metaprobe launched. Deal? Well, a temporary delay. That's the best I can do, if that's what you need. That's what I need. Simmons, why did you lie to me? You mean those men are no better? No. They're no better. They're not going to get any better, and you know it. All right, just a minute, John. We have to hold that story in. We have to. The International Lunar Finance Committee meeting on the 15th to discuss the meta signals and, in particular, our probe. Now, if one word, one hint of failure leaks out, they'll immediately abandon their support for our whole project. So just remember that. Check that nuclear disposal area myself. Yes, sir. I'll need two volunteers. Very good, Commander. That's where we are going, Commander. We just use Area 1 as a turning point. Navigation Beacon Delta. It's a landmark. Some landmark. Collins? Let's move in closer and take a good look. Yes, sir. There's no radiation, John. I've checked it out. Count's normal. 
That was the first nuclear waste area up here. Has it been used since I left? No, they've moved on to area two. This one hasn't been used for five years. You know, in those days, we had no centigrade radiation covers. How's it holding up? All right, according to reports. It's constantly monitored. All right, Collins, thank you. Let's move on to area two. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. Jackson. Well, it seems all right. Hmm. So far. Jackson. Thanks. Now get out of there as fast as you can. That seems to prove the radiation count here is within safe limits. So much for Dr. Russell's theory. Hmm. Whatever affected the two probe astronauts and killed the other nine men was not radiation. Seems not. Commander, I've got to get out of here. All right, Collins, we'll leave you right now. 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 Move aside, Commander. I'm getting out of here. Don't do that, Collins. It'll kill us all. Breakdown of all recorded information on the training flights of the probe astronauts. I'd like to check against the Eagle shuttle flights flown by Collins. Search for any correlation between them, any whatsoever. Immediately, Commander.
Dr. Russell? Commander, Dr. Mathias here. What's the latest report on the condition of the Metaprobe astronauts? Frank Warren died at 1328. And Eric Sparkman? Dr. Russell is with him now. Computer, please verify that last report. Stage five mutation complete. All brain activity stopped. Cell life sustained by artificial life support systems only. Conclusion, astronaut Eric Sparkman deceased. died. Eric. Frank. Of what? I mean, I was told you were told lies. They died of an illness no one can understand. Earth Command wanted you to think it was a temporary setback. But the Metaprobe. Forget the probe, Carter. Before we do anything more, I'm going to find out why those two men died. Yes, but the problem here may affect the Meta probe. We must make a man landing on Meta. Nothing must stop us. Nothing. I can't guarantee that they won't be affected three days or three months out into deep space. Now, your job is to put man on Meta. The giant leap for mankind. It's beginning to look like a stumble in the dark. This is a replay of the flight recorder from the Eagle, flown by Eric and Frank on their last training run. The flight was recording perfectly. Then suddenly everything went blank for two minutes, just like that. Then just as suddenly it all started again, perfectly. Where did the blank out occur? Navigation beacon delta on the far side. Waste disposal on area one. Paul. Check out all the figures on Area 1 for the past 10 days. Sandra, check 10 on Area 1, please, and bring it in. Yes, Paul. The shuttle pilot, Collins, took us over Area 1 on his way to Area 2. Does he always fly that route? Four or six times a week. It's a turning point, right? It's one of the few constructions on the dark side. It's a clear landmark for going to Area 2. And the probe astronauts? Well, they do their training flights over on the dark side, away from Alpha traffic. But they fly over there regularly. But there is a minimum altitude regulation. Yeah. And that's where the flight recorder blanked out on their last training flight. I had Collins fly low over that area this morning to get a good close look. Paul, Commander, there is a steep rise in heat levels in disposal area one. This is impossible. All indications show that the radiation level is normal, but the heat continues to rise. Victor, I think we've got a connection, a correlation. Right, I'll be with you. Bring in Area 1 on video. That is incredible heat, but still no radiation. It's incomprehensible. Heat without atomic activity. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Burn out. Camera gone. Second camera, please.
All visual contact lost. Oh, I want an eagle on the pad for immediate liftoff. We've got to see what's going on out there. <laughs> Area one. Check data systems running. Data systems functioning. It's getting more active. I'm increasing altitude. Still getting data? The magnetic field's expanding. We can't measure it. Get him away from there quickly. Hang on, Commander. We're going to try and blast you out of there. Hang on, Commander. We're going to try and blast you out of there. Switch to onboard backup systems, Commander. We're losing you. Backup failing. All systems out. Rescue ship moving. Four nine, altitude three five. Switching out our rescue location beams now. Impact ten seconds. physical shock. We can't find anything else so far. That's it, Commander. Well, I told you there was nothing wrong with me. I walked away from there. There was no damage. Commander, that is not the kind of damage I'm looking for. You knew that that area was suspect. You knew that it already affected the two probe astronauts and the Eagle shuttle pilot in some way. And yet you went right out there yourself. We're looking for answers, Commander. Not heroes. I didn't know you cared. Hmm. Look at this. It's a monitoring device from the old Area 1. It was used to record the magnetic output from the artificial gravity system there. When the area was closed down, it had nothing to record for five years. But now look at it. 20-fold increase in a magnetic field. Mm, that's before it burnt out. We've been obsessed with radiation. Wrong. This instrument's given me a lead. I think we're facing a new effect, arising from the atomic waste deposited here over the years. Magnetic energy outputs of unprecedented violence. Magnetic energy responsible for the flare-up at Area 1. Magnetic energy causing brain damage? Something we didn't even think to check for, but I believe it was a sudden surge in magnetic field that wrecked your flight navigation system and blanked out the astronauts' flight recorder. The probe astronauts flew over there daily, as did Collins and the shuttle. And we've all been exposed to it. We've all been to Area 2, and to get there, we turn over Area 1. Well, it could be a cumulative effect that hasn't as yet... There's an even bigger problem I see looming up. Area 1 burnt itself out in a magnetic subsurface firestorm. What worries me now is that the same thing could happen in Area 2. How much time do we have? We need solid data on magnetic levels. I won't be responsible for any more men out on the surface in these conditions. Neither will I. We equip an eagle to monitor magnetic levels and do it by remote control. Straight ahead. 
easy. Straight as you go. Good. That's good, Paul. Hold that, Paul. Sandra, readings. Radiation count normal, magnetic field zero. Okay, Paul, set her down. Frog command. My office tried to query you about your emergency code, Alpha-1. You didn't seem to be available. I am now. Commissioner, the heat is starting to rise on the interior of Area 2 as well. Now, it contains 140 times the amount of waste in Area 1. With quantities like that, there could be a chain reaction. Well, what are the chances it could burn itself out, like Area 1? Simmons, you don't seem to understand. We're sitting on top of it. There is no chance. Well, what's to be done? Well, we can try and break the pile apart, rip up the rods, destroy the mass. If we could disperse the mass over a wider area. All right. Come on, let's do it. We do have limited time. Yes, sir.
Central computer updated with everything possible, constantly. Number 26, disperse to grid C9. Repeat, disperse to grid C9. Grid C is full now, 4. I'm moving over to C10. Don't be some people here. 26, take the tower away. Getting kind of crash. Well, we've had navigational failures on two of the ships. They return to base for replacements. The magnetic field must be expanding. Tell them to increase altitude. Right. Main mission to all eagles, increase altitude by 10. Do you have an extra ship? No, sir, they're all committed. Well, take the commission as eagle into orbit. Report on how things look from up there. Right. Greetings. Heat level holding, magnetic field fluctuating. That's what worries me. I'm right behind you, man. Like a Eagle one to Alpha. Go ahead, one. Lift off complete. Trajectory computed and programmed. I will be in orbit in four minutes. Steady. You think we have it under control, John? Too early to tell. Well, I must say, it does look pretty promising to me. Well done. Now, I have to issue a communique sooner or later. Well, it'll give us more time to consider our next move. You see, John... I see men risking their lives to avert disaster, total disaster. Now, wake up, Commissioner. If this goes wrong, there won't be anybody to issue a communique. There will be no survivors. Commander, it's going up! Abort! Abort the mission! Main mission to all Eagles. Return to base immediately. Repeat, return to base immediately. receiving you. Now, maybe you're receiving me. The moon is going out of the Earth's orbit. That explosion. It has pushed us out of the Earth's orbit. <laughs> Alpha, can you hear me? Repeat. Alpha, are you okay? Alpha, do you copy? Alpha, I am not receiving you.
God, you're okay. What's happening down there? We've got tremendous G-forces. We can hardly move. I know it. We seem to be decelerating. We're compensating. I see the whole disposal area has been acting like a gigantic rocket motor, pushing us out of orbit. But if it's stopped fissioning, then we shan't be accelerating anymore. Carter might have a chance. Carter, do you read me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you make it back to the base? Yeah. I can make it. I'm closing now. I can make it. Good, Captain. Check out the base. This is main mission. All sections report. Security section. We have audio contact. Video systems gone. Service section. Lost all power. Operating on emergency systems. Medical section, Paul. Explosive decompression in two compartments. Areas sealed off. No leaks. Sufficiently operational to accept casualties. Help Lou, please. I'm getting a long-range video picture from the Mars satellite. Can we make it back to Earth? Uma, consult the master computer. I want to read out on contingency plan Exodus. Yes, sir. Punch it up on the big screen, Paul. It affects all of us here, all of us. Emergency operation Exodus. Indefinite factors. One. Moon on unknown trajectory. Two, constantly changing G-forces due to Moon's movement away from Earth. Three, insufficient data to compute flight plan. All factors in memory bank relating to Operation Exodus inapplicable. Insufficient data available under prevailing circumstances. Human decision required. Attention all sections Alpha. This is Commander John Koenig. As you know, our moon has been blasted out of orbit. We have been completely cut off from planet Earth. As we are, we have power, 
environment, and therefore the possibility of survival. If we should try to improvise a return to Earth without travel plots, without full resources, it is my belief that we would fail. Therefore, in my judgment, we do not try. The totally unforeseen accident on the lunar surface has caused very serious repercussions here on Earth. The gravity disruption, the earthquakes in the United States along the San Andreas Fault and in Yugoslavia, as well as southern France, has caused enormous damage to life and property. The International Lunar Commission, with its new chairman, is an executive conference at this moment deciding what steps might be taken to rescue the 311 men and women on Moon Base Alpha. Little hope is held, however, that there are any survivors. For a short time, it was thought a rescue might have been attempted from the space dock until that, too, was hurled out of orbit. It has now been established that the moon's acceleration away from Earth has put it beyond the reach. All scan all frequencies for any signal from Earth, anything. September 13, 1999. Meta-signals increasing. Yes. Maybe there. 